Hey, welcome back everyone, Toys just here, and I'm back yet again for yet another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video. And today comes courtesy of my friends over at The Loyal Subjects. This is a look at their San Diego Comic Con 2023 exclusives, Toka and Razar in their arcade colors. Yes, featuring Toka as he looks with all the different multicoloredness, right, from his video game incarnation, as you can clearly see on the sides of the box. On the back of the box, it tells you everything that he comes with. You get a little bit of a write-up, which is, in fact, his cartoon bio, the original 80s cartoon Toka bio, just FYI. And here is the barcode as well. Now, over on the Razar side of things, you can clearly see that, yes, he is sporting video game colors, as arcade colors suggest. You get to see Razar right there on the side. You get the same sort of layout right up. Here's a little bit of Razar. Now, again, that's the cartoon bio. So, as we've kind of touched down the little subjects before, it's a bit of a mishmash of all things Ninja Turtles. Which, for me, it kind of goes either way at this point. There's so many people making Ninja Turtles, but in either case, they're going to have fun. So sit back, relax. We're going to grab ourselves a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the San Diego Comic-Con 2023, the arcade colors Toka and Razar from the Loyal Subjects. And while I got all you mutants here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube videos. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys... Daily news updates, guarantee you'll find something here that you like. So, here's everything out of the packages. You have Toka in his purpleness, and you got Razar in his green Speedos. <laughs> Which are just classic, right? So, uh, what I did here is I've already put the weapons into the hands, and I'm just going to leave it like that. The hands on both figures are kind of difficult to get them open and put the weapons in. I like how they've changed the weapons a little bit. They're a little bit gummy, but they're also very rigid at the same time. The paint for the most part is okay. Likewise with the spike mace ball right here, really nicely done. All the weapons match the characters, kind of, sort of, getting Playmates old school vibes off of these. These are really well done, I think, in terms of what the Loyal Subjects has been doing. Now, you're not going to see any major upgrades outside of the paint. The paint is pretty stellar. But then you have some looseness, some wonkiness still or here and there with the jaw. Let's say the jaw opens really nicely. So I like that snapper turtle aspect of it. But it's very loose. Now, the colors are very cool. Very eye-catching. Very much the arcade colors that you see for Toka. As is the design doesn't really differentiate too much from the cartoon version of Toka. But, as you can see, the paint for the most part goes all the way around the shell, the arms, the fingernails are painted, every little torn piece of fabric is painted. He's got a nice heft to him. He's very sharp on the little bits of shells and the poking out pieces, so it's definitely fun. And I really like the paint aspect. I think that they absolutely nailed it. It's a nice improvement. Articulation as they boast on the back of the packaging, 31 points of articulation, sure. Wherever it may lie, does it really form function to 31 points of articulation? I guess it does. I can't honestly tell you that it does everything that you would expect 31 points of articulation to do. But for me, I'm really not going to discount them on it because I think that, yes, these are great action figures at this point for people that want to spend a little bit less, right? You can see the little flappy part of his shell isn't glued on. I don't know if it's supposed to be. It kind of seems like it would. I like the thigh swivel. I like the legs. The double joints have never really looked all that great, right, for any of the loyal subjects Ninja Turtles figures, but it's really not something to discount them on. It's just their design aspect, and I'm more focused on does it apply to the source material, and is it accurate? Now, in terms of Razar, right, this is actually really funny, and more of a conversation piece, if anything. He has a human skull, right? Is it real? I'm going to assume that it is. That would be cool to put a little articulation on it. But he's essentially jammed a femur bone into a skull. It's definitely not the spinal cord, right? Like a predator would do. But uh, yeah, it's certainly interesting, right? Where'd the skull come from? Now, he does come with a pair of extra hands, weapon holding hands, nice sculpt, nice paint to him. And he also does come with a sewer lid that has been modified 
uh, into a shield, right? <laughs> I like all the scratch marks, which again has more questions. Was someone trying to escape the sewers? Or is this just a case of Rezar scratching up his own shield because he's like a dog wolf mutant, right? Rezar, beautifully painted, nice, stands out, very cool. It's not really the Razar from the video games, right? Because this head portrait is Razar. He has more of the movie look to it. If you look at the video games, eh, Toke is spot on in this sense. Razar needs a little work. These are through and through just recolors of the cartoon TMNT done by the loyal subjects, right? So I would have preferred a different head portrait if, in fact, you're going to call this the arcade colors, which meant this is the arcade versions of Toka and Rezar. So that aside, the paint is good. There's no peg holes on the bottom of either of their feet, but I like the green Speedos, right? But again, this is kind of all over the place in the totality of Ninja Turtles. It's the cartoon and the video game put together. They say where I'm having some problems. NECA Toys has already done this. You know what I mean? I would have loved to have seen the, the full-on video game version. The head is hard to move around. You get the same looseness in the joints of the jaw, right? Unfortunately, although it kind of looks like they're both talking, so you can kind of have fun. A lot of the times with the loyal subjects, I get what they're going for, but then I have to have something to talk about. I could literally just make this video for three minutes and go, yeah, the articulation's okay, paint's gorgeous, and moving on, right? But you come here to have me talk about every little detail, like the matte blue, and then you got the shiny silver blue, right? That's cool, I like the differentiation on that. When you try to move the abdomen, the waist just kind of rattles a little bit, right? So you're not gonna get movement out of that 31 POA, right? The legs are fine, he's got some thigh articulation, double jointed knees, the feet will go up and down, but they do not pivot to the sides, right? They will rotate to the sides, but they won't pivot. But again, I think that at these particular price points, for a more, we'll say, quote-unquote collector figure while not being NECA or Super 7, they do definitely do the trick, especially when you look at what NECA has done. As I'll say over and over, NECA Toys is the higher price point collector action figure right and a lot of times people say well those are hard to move with their joints and everything else yeah i just leave them on the shelf these loyal subject figures are good for kids and good for those that want to actually just move them around at a lower price point now when you do pair them up in the arcade sense with what NECA has done they actually fit in quite nicely. And you can definitely have these figures squaring off with the Ninja Turtles. They may be on the smaller side, but I do think that scale-wise, it's kind of a mixed bag with what you see on the screen. So I think it works. And all the villains that we've seen thus far, like I said, here's the loyal subjects, Krang, the android body, mixed with Nekatoys' Shredder and Slash. Yeah, that's definitely some shell shock action. So they fit in nicely. So... That's going to wrap it up for my look at the brand new San Diego Comic-Con 2023, the arcade colors Toka and Razar by the Loyal Subjects. Again, it's kind of a mishigash of different elements of TMNT lore. I think Toka definitely fares a lot better in the totality over Razar, but they're two really cool figures. You're going to have your own opinions on the articulation scheme. For what they are, it totally works. Have some fun with some toys once in a while. And if you really want to go the collector route, go NECA Toys or Super 7. But you've heard my thoughts, and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything at TMNT. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, I kind of like that these don't have that digital look to them. They can just be arcade colors, and that totally works. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.